Hey fam, it's Mariah, and welcome to Calvary Conversations, where we simplify God's word to reach today's culture by casting down arguments through real, radical testimonies and biblical conversations. Now let's get started. Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah, and today I am here with my friend, I was going to say best friends, my <laughs> my. Fr- <laughs> My best friends and my husband, we have Ryan Riley right here. Say your name. Hi. Hello. The podcast listeners need to hear your voice. I notice that when I'm listening to podcasts. So. Oh, yeah. My name's Ryan. <laughs> yes. Okay. Next up, we have Chris Garcia. Oh. Say something about yourself. I. Uh, Okay. Oh, happy to be here. <laughs> happy to be here. She sounds Let really happy. <laughs> okay, up next we have the one, the only Christian hey. Sanchez. Sanchez. Yes. Can you just put the Hello. mic a little closer to you, sir? A little closer? Yes. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm not really comfortable mic. around this. Yeah, it's like the still yeah, quiet you're voice. You're supposed to feel like you're about to eat it. Oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like an ice cream cone. Uh, yeah, I love the taste. Oh, <laughs> uh, never mind. I love mind. the taste of metal. <laughs> That's weird. Okay, yeah. anyway, if you didn't know, this is a podcast that you're listening to about women <laughs> and chris and i are women so just letting you know but we have two men here and this is basically i don't know if you guys have ever watched those youtube videos back in the day when it's like christian men tell all and we Krista and i get to ask some questions but look at this as your big brothers in christ giving you the truth not their opinion but what the word has to say but also um just biblical advice and counsel and what godly men are looking for, not just their opinion, but what is biblical. But also, this is a disclaimer that I want to give everyone. If you're not a Christian, don't think we're just coming at you and saying this is what you need. We just want you to come to know the Lord. Well, that's our prayer. But this is for women who are abiding in Christ, looking for Christian men, whether you're single and you want to get married. Well, that's the only people who should be looking for Christian <laughs> <laughs> because I'm not looking for Christian. I got my husband right here. But we have snatched. the perspective of a uh, newlywed, Ryan, as a man who was single a lot of his life. And then we have Christian, who has been, been single, single all of my life. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And that's why we have you here today. But also, I want to say that they are Trinity Camera. Thank you. <laughs> they are men of God who... They're like, they are brothers. I mean, to me, Ryan, before I married, he was like my big brother. But Christian, he is older than me. And they're like, Old and our gray. brothers. And they care about us. So this is just advice with that. So the first question that I want to ask you guys, um, it's kind of a big question, but this is for. Um, well, first, I, I want to say, oh. I think also this would be uh this information <coughs> is also would benefit somebody who's not a believer if they implement mm. it in their life. I think God's word is true. Amen. However, you even if you don't believe in him, mm. Uh, mm. but it is probably mostly yeah. beneficial for those who are walking with him. Yeah, Amen. exactly. We might offend some feminists out there. But it's because feminine energy, feminine energy, <laughs> those boss babes out there might be getting angry. But this is not our opinion. This is what the Bible says about Proverbs 31 women, what he looks, the Lord looks for. But also, I think the title is going to be something like to not be a 21st century woman. Don't Ooh, be just like the women snap. of the century. Instead of being a 21st century woman, be a Proverbs 31 woman. So amen. there you go. First question. We're going to kick it off with the typical question that girls would want to ask guys, but they're too afraid to ask. We're not. (laughs) We're not. So what do guys look for in a godly woman? And I know that you're going to be saying right now, but is this my advice? But whether it's your personal advice, we don't need like what's your what type. Your list. (laughs) Your list. We don't need that. But what in general, (laughs) biblically, should a Christian man look for in a godly woman what would you say anyone want to start uh i guess 
Christian's like, I'm so I'm looking. nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still so uh, looking. Where hopefully, are you? Uh, I don't get any angry comments, but. <laughs> Uh, but I think if I think this is something that I was thinking about, if you can separate it into two things, there are um, spiritual qualities and their physical qualities. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the both complement each other. Um, in terms of what I would seek spiritually, you as as a guy, I think someone who's been single my whole life and just kind of under, chosen to wait. Um, because I felt like the Lord will lead me to that person one day. Um, I think usually you want somebody who's first and foremost, they put God above you. Mm -hmm. I think that is the first quality. The second is that, um, that they're serving, that they're involved in a church. And I know we hear that a lot and I know we yeah. are a church and <laughs> you know, this isn't me pulling the plug for Calvary, but <laughs> I've noticed that you, when you are around other people who serve, mm -hmm. and I think this was what happened with Morgan and Valley and, oh, and like, and, and Ryan and Mariah, like when you're around those people, you get to see people. how they are in their day to day, not just when they're just with you. Mm -hmm. So good. there's, you get to really see how do they interact with people? Are yeah. they sociable? Are they not? Are they nice? How do they process um, anger? How do they process a bad situation? Because things aren't rosy. Mm -hmm. You know, how they how do they deal with drama? How do yeah. they deal with correction? That's like the hardest thing. Like, oh, yeah. um, And you kind of see that. And then you get to meet their family mm -hmm. because you're in a church. And hopefully if their family said this is not every woman, mm -hmm. um, but... You know, you want to be able to marry into a family that is going to love you and receive you. And I know that's not for everybody, so I'm not dogging anybody because we don't live with perfect families. Nobody has a perfect family. Um, we live in a very dysfunctional world and a lot of broken marriages and homes. Um, but you hope that the person that you're seeking wants to change that. So if you come from that background, yeah, you're able to kind of basically you want to overcome it. And when you establish those relationships um, yeah, it becomes something that is a goal and, and it's evident in your mannerisms and how you act, um, in terms of physical qualities, you, you would like somebody who's, I would say more traditional in the sense, um, not wearing <laughs> like, uh, <Modesty>. look, <laughs> looking <laughs> like a, uh, <laughs> yeah, um, I, I feel like, like you uh, don't, you don't yeah. want somebody like <laughs> walking Being around nice. and, uh, you know, like. I, I mean, like, you know, like we, we know how modern women dress. Uh, mm -hmm. We know how young girls dress um, yep. because that's what the world says. That's, that's the style. And I, and I get that, you know, like you want to be trendy, but mm -hmm. you know, you want to, don't go be trendy, be, tr be, be timeless. Yeah, you know, time don't be trendy, be timeless time. and age gracefully. And, you know, <laughs> age <laughs> gracefully in the sense that you don't like, it's not like, also, like, you, know what I mean? you want like, there to be room for also, it sounds weird but curiosity like if you're just exposing everything like that i remember only show your ankles ashley was saying, <laughs> um not ashley but you can talk more about this right because it's supposed to be for the men but a story that alex gave is this older man this young girl comes into the shop trying to basically exposing oh, yeah, today, everything yeah. and this older man sits her down and he says do you know about like all the you know amazing minerals and things that are so precious like diamonds and pearls and gold and all these things are buried deep mm -hmm. under the earth. Mm -hmm. It's like it takes work to get it. To get it and yeah. you have to have miners that come and get it. And first they need to call up the, you know, the government. So it's like talking to the parents. Yeah. And then you need to sign paperwork. That's a marriage that's license. Marriage. And then you have to work hard at it to get it. And by the time and then that's like marriage. And like the and so but nowadays you have illegal mining and stuff. People mm -hmm. get it, scraping it from the top, you know, like the stuff that's not the good gold or whatever. The real diamonds, and yeah. the, they aren't able to get the real gold or the diamonds that are deep below the earth or pearls like in a seashell or whatever. They're and so a fraction of what they really how can. women need to value themselves mm -hmm. as. Not that you have to be wearing burkinis, which yeah. you guys <laughs> basically look that up. It's a burka. Uh, swimsuit fully <laughs> covered <laughs> we're not saying that but anyway just knowing that you are valued and you don't need to share all the goods that should be for your husband yeah. but ryan do you want to share about that a little bit or you were going to say something 
I was just going to say, I think I heard somebody say once that uh, there's a difference between, um, I guess, there's different words for it, but being hot versus being beautiful. Mm -hmm. (coughs) That's good. And there's somebody, you know, if even the world says if you if you dress in a way that's like hot or sexy, you know, for guys, the way that a guy looks at that, and I don't know what's biblical to that and what's not, but a guy looks at it and just it doesn't it doesn't equal marriage material. Mm. It equals mm-hmm. in your Take head. Home to mama. Uh, <laughs> uh, hit it and quit it for yeah. like better words, you know, just. Uh, yep. You know, one night stand, it's all, all bad stuff, yeah. but mm-hmm. uh, that's what you're putting out is that, that you're easy. That I'm, um, yeah. And it's so, anyways, but I think in the contrast of that, okay, I'll just read this first. It says uh, in First Timothy 2, it says, uh, and I want women to be modest in their appearance. Uh, they should wear decent and appropriate clothing and not draw attention to themselves by the way they fix their hair by wearing gold or pearls or expensive clothes. For women who claim to be devoted to God should make themselves attractive by the good things they do. Mm-hmm. Women should learn quietly and submissively. I do not let women teach men or have authority over them. Let them listen quietly. For God made Adam first and afterward he made Eve. And it was not Adam who was deceived by Satan. <clears throat> The woman was deceived and sin was the result. But women will be saved through childbearing, assuming they continue to live in faith, love, and holiness and modesty. Mm, modesty. So, <clears throat> modesty, yeah, and that's what it says at the beginning. So I think the contrast is that you can be modest and beautiful. Mm-hmm. And beauty mm-hmm. isn't something that uh, you lose with age. Like you can, you can see many older women who are Mm -hmm. still who still radiate a lot of beauty Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. because of these things because the things they do the way the lord lives through them yeah and they the good the good that comes out of them yeah and so yeah that's what i'd say about that and then the other thing is uh it does say you know through accepting your, the role as a mother, I think that motherliness is a good thing and mm. wanting to be a mom and and coming under submission in quiet and gentle spirit under your husband or your father, or whatever leadership figure you have. That's not to say, like, I know you guys were talking about <laughs> the, the women, even in the church nowadays, who, you know, empowerment of, I mm. forget, Boss babes or whatever. Oh yeah, like the, the <laughs> female but energy boss babe. Mm-hmm. Female mm-hmm. energy, yeah. So not to say that that okay, Proverbs thirty one woman is very industrious. Oh yeah. You know she mm-hmm. makes clothes for her family. She burns the midnight She'll oil. Be all she's, those boss babes. She's known mm-hmm. at the city gates. Her husband praises her, and yeah. so I think that all those things are good things, but it shouldn't uh, counteract. It can be done in in a way in 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 line with these other things that mm. the Bible also That's why talks I can about. say mm. that her husband can praise her because she's not doing it to be like I want to make more money and this is my money, this is your money, and mm. like I get to do this, this, this. She's doing it for their family yeah. and also because he's telling her to. And I give that example of like even with, you know, to all you haters out there who think that I just do what my dad says and I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway i don't respect ryan um but it's funny because like with my dad i realized that it was a good thing of learning to respect my dad like my dad growing up always wanted me to like with my if i wear leggings wear long t-shirts and cover my behind and you know to wear things that are modest or even things with like it sounds legalistic but like my brothers and my dad liked my hair long they're like it's beautiful you have beautiful long hair like keep it and i was like oh my friends are telling me to cut it and they're like that's because they're jealous. Keep it. And so I did that even in a weird way out of a respect thing. And like, and that's where even when I'm on stage and I'm like, or I'm here doing the podcast or I'm on stage, like leading, I would say the time of prayer. I'm doing that not because I want to do it. It's mm-hmm. because my dad's like, hey, 
I'm tired after speaking. Morgan's playing worship. Kevin's doing the sound and that. Like, can you do that? You know, and that's the same thing with Deborah. You can't use the mm. excuse of, well, Deborah, she huh. did that. She didn't want to lead mm. the army. It was supposed to be rock, but she was saying, can you do it? And she said, you know, if I do it, then it will say a woman got the honor. Right. And that wasn't right. So Christian missionary women, Krista knows it from probably studying all of them. They a lot of times say, I didn't want to. I wasn't first in it. Mm -hmm. Like it was probably a man, but they didn't step they up. So here him. I am. Mm -hmm. So women should know that they're second and that's okay because women, women are protected by men. Like mm -hmm. men take the first blow for most of the yeah. thing. Like mm -hmm. men are the ones who are the protectors, the providers. And so we should rest in the word submission mm -hmm. because all that means is that they're going to have to stand before God and how they protected us and them leading. Um, but for women, we're not off the hook. You know, we have to, our desire, right? It says the woman's desire is to we'll rule, rule over, over her husband. husband. Yep. And so we have to we have to acknowledge that and know that that's our temptation. So mm. you're going to say something? Oh, no, I just quoted. Oh. It's in Genesis. I think. Yes, in Genesis. So, and then did you want to read First Peter 3? Or, or you were reading uh, the... Do you want me to read the First Peter 3? Uh, one? Sure. But First Peter 3, 1 says, In the same way you wise must accept your authority, uh, accept the authority of your husbands, then... Even if some refuse to obey the good news, your godly lives. So this is talking about even if you have a husband who's not a Christian, it says your godly lives will speak to them without any words. They will be won over by observing your pure and reverent lives. Or it says quiet, gentle spirit. Do not be concerned by the hour beauty of fancy hairstyles, expensive jewelry or beautiful clothes. You should clothe yourself instead with the beauty that comes from within, the unfading beauty of a gentle, quiet spirit, which is so precious to God. This is how the women of mm -hmm. old made themselves beautiful. They put their trust in God and they accepted the authority of their husbands. For mm -hmm. instance, Sarah obeyed her husband Abraham and called him her master. You are her daughters when you do what is right without fear of what your husbands might do. So I mean, that verse, those verses right there convict me so much because I'm, I can tend to want to dominate and lead. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, but as some people have said about me, but I know that that's wrong. Like, I don't like that. I struggled not being quiet or gentle and I don't like that about me. And I want the Holy Spirit to change me and refine me. And he has been refining me since being married and, like, I am strong, but like my dad says, you can be like a horse where you're strong, but you are meek, where you are have that bridle of the Holy Spirit taming you. So meekness, mm -hmm. my dad always says, is not weakness. Like, yes, you could dominate in your flesh, but that's it's not going to benefit you. Yeah. yeah. But did you want to say, Chris, anything about like modesty or anything for women? Because like, these are all triggering words for a yeah. lot of girls. And this is really sensitive, but... Why think, do you walk in modesty? I guess. Remember, Let me take off my gold hoops first. Yeah, I'm just up. <laughs> remember a tagline you said yesterday oh, was yeah. be the type of. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was. Um, oh, and yeah, we were all talking. It was like where I've heard, but it was like be the person you're looking for. And so is looking mm -hmm. for. Yeah. Be the person you're looking for is looking for. Um, and I've always thought about that, too, of just like, OK, like if, um, you know, I want this like this godly guy who, you know, uh, reveres the Lord and like just different things. Like there's even, I think modesty in men too, of like how they conduct themselves. Um, mm -hmm. and just like, I think even like speech and around other women and mm -hmm. things like that. And those are actually things that I look for. And so I'm like, if I'm looking for that, then I need to be that way too. Like yeah. there's a modesty in like my appearance and my conduct mm -hmm. and how often yeah. even I maybe interact with, um, the opposite sex and brothers. Like there's, I think modesty can be, just a very broad term too of like it, there's so many facets to it it's not just tailored to like my gold hoops <laughs> like mm -hmm. your appearance mm -hmm. you know so yeah it's um inside. yeah what do you guys think of that too like modesty in the sense of just the different areas it's not just like the physicality clothes i mean i i agree I'm, and i'm glad to actually mention that the modesty in men because people act like men don't have to be modest because mm. men we can oftentimes say vulgar things sometimes we don't read the room like mm. we'll behave in a certain way um and this may not be applicable to all men but you know like being able to conduct yourself around other women and how your approach the mm. way you greet them the way you uh, mm -hmm. talk with them you socialize with them how just like your your whole behavior you have to be very mindful mm -hmm. 
And I think, you know, a lot of gentlemen don't always know that because sometimes they just grow in a house full of guys. So they're just mm-hmm. like, you know, um, but I grew up with sisters. So mm-hmm. my sister who's older, you know, yeah. told me, Christian, this is what girls respect. This is what girls like. They don't like when you do that. Mm-hmm. You know, you'd be more mindful. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's good to know it's, it's not, this is not like an attack or yeah. Mm-hmm. Like on girls. Oh, you can't, you can't do anything like, Mm-mm. um, I think what we're just trying to say is there's a biblical way of living yeah. and that within that biblical, with yeah. And with that biblical standard of living, um, you know, it's contrary to the world. Yeah. Um, and that's why I think that was what we kind of threw out at the title was, uh, you know, don't be a 21st century woman because today's women, you know, it's about my body, my choice. Mm-hmm. It's about, um, my rights, I got to have my money. Mm-hmm. His money is also my money, but like mm-hmm. some women think that like, yeah, it's I not like it we don't, I can do it better. Yeah. There's no, yeah. the idea of a partnership uh, or like being in unity where two become one. Um, yeah. That yeah. idea head, is like very headship, separated you know. now. Yeah. Headship, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think. Like, yeah, it's, you know, even if she makes money, it's it's his decision. Mm. Yep, Ooh, yeah. that's true. Yeah, that's a. That's, that's a, a one that's a people. hard one. Yeah, yeah because even I'm like I'm like thinking, oh man, like that's a good point because I'm like, oh well, I see things as balance. Like we both make decisions together, but at the end of the day, Yours. from the biblical perspective, Amen. the man is the head of the woman. Yep. The and God is the head of the man. Yeah. So it's not like the man is unaccountable by no. any means. Mm-hmm. If anything, his accountability is greater yeah. because he has to subject, be subject to the wrath of a, yeah. or or the mercy or the grace of a of of a God. Yeah. And I think that is, um, you know, something that you have to be mindful. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I think modesty, like you're saying, going back to what you're saying, Chris, earlier, modesty has a lot of facets. It's not just in the physical. We I know we talked about the physical and we had scripture on the physical but it is also on your behavior and your mannerism and it's a two-way street mm, it goes yep. both ways exactly exactly and mm. my advice because we have to wrap it up and you guys can give your closing thoughts for women is before you dress in the morning and i've had to think of this because my husband does this is asking the lord god what do you want me to wear not saying i think god would be fine with it but truly would you are you wearing this to impress someone this someone with this outfit? Or are you wearing this because I just want to be comfortable and it's more comfortable wearing less or whatever? Or I don't want to wear a bra. Like that's how a lot of women are nowadays. And do you really want even though you're like, well, my the Christian brother should look away. Yeah, they can look away, but think of the bad witness and talking to Christian women. You are to worldly guys seeing, oh, this is a Christian girl and she's dressing like this. It's Mm -hmm. a bad example, first of all. And then you're also just kind of exposing yourself. Like, there are some perverted people out there and Uh scary people. And it's like, you shouldn't be doing that. Even if you're like, well, they need to deal with their struggle and that. Well, you need to care about your brother in Christ Mm -hmm. and do your part and ask the Lord, God, why am I dressing this way? Am I dressing to attract other, like, girls? And, like, like if you, well, not attract other girls. Uh, hopefully you don't struggle with homosexuality but meaning like girls like to impress other girls with their outfits like what they wear name brands and that which guys don't care about but just making sure that you are addressing even modesty is with not trying to be flashy or trying to be showy doing it in a way where you can still be cute um and look good but still being okay with you know like how ryan always is is like I want him to know that I'm saving everything for him. You know, like he gets to see me and I'm not trying to impress anyone else into him even before we're married. Like you appreciated that. And so that was like really cool that my dad and my family trained me that way. But closing thoughts for you and then we'll go around the room. Closing thoughts? Yeah, just closing thoughts with like how you would lovingly exhort your sister in Christ Mm -hmm. and just anything you would like to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, about anything. We'll do another podcast. This is a short one. Yeah, I guess I would just, I mean, this isn't for condemnation. It's for uh, encouragement and exhortation to to live like this, like the Bible says to live as a woman. Because <clears throat> it is, to the man who's running after Jesus, it is very attractive. Yeah. Everybody else is going to call you crazy. 
but uh, Jesus told us that would happen. So it's mm-hmm. okay. You know, it's to be expected and um, embraced even, you know. And uh, I would just say that, um, yeah, don't don't feel condemnation if you feel like you don't match up to the things we talked about or read. But just realize, like Keith Green says, you know, it's by the grace of God that I stand. Amen. Amen. And so it's apart from that grace, we all mm. would be in hell. And so yeah, uh, I think just uh, search the word and find out for yourself what, what the Lord says about what it means to be a, a woman walking with him and uh, ask him to search you and teach you how how to be because it's a a woman under submission to the Lord and to her husband is a very beautiful thing. And that's what I would say that the world tells women that it's, that is different. The the world says that woman under submission is stifled and extinguished. Mm -hmm. But I think according to God's word, that that's where really where a woman blossoms. Yeah. Honestly, I feel I the best when I get to clean at home. It's weird, but like when I have a clean home and then it, it's like weird because I was never that girl. My dad came to our apartment recently. He's like, why is your apartment so clean? And I'm like, I feel good about it because like I'm a wife now. And like you almost get put into that. And then when you have children, God gives you the grace and strength for that. So if you're like, I'm not that type of woman, I'm not really into children and that and homemaking. I just like being in the office like the Lord will give you that in that time if you allow that. It's, it's really cool, and it really does empower you with the Holy Spirit. That's what I would say. Mm-hmm. But, Christian, I want you to say your one quote about forsaking. Well, um, before I, I yeah, I guess that, yeah, I, I looked it up. <laughs> um, I think one of the, I was reading today slash hearing a sermon on this, but I read this, like, a few days ago, and then I went back to it, Um and I heard it, and I found a sermon on it, and it's Psalm chapter 1, uh, and how it says, Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or stand around with sinners, or mm. join in with mockers, but they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. And when I was hearing that, it's like it clicked, um, cause I've read that Psalm so many times. I'm like, oh yeah, it talks about the wicked, it talks about the righteous, how there's benefits about choosing God's will. But then when you're, when we're putting it into practice, the idea of that, when you delight in the things of God, like you, you are in, a, in a, you're in contentment, like mm-hmm. delight is contentment. You're, you, and you're willing to abide in what the Lord is asking of you because in doing so God rewards that it's like, it's saying right here where it says um, that they're like trees planted along the riverbank bearing fruit each season. Mm -hmm. And I think we have to bear fruit. Mm -hmm. And um, for women, I think Mm -hmm. the way they do bear fruit is in seeking the attributes that which God has or that God wishes to adorn them with and Mm -hmm. bless them with. And, uh, part of the quote that I was saying was don't forsake uh, a tradition for modernity because what ends up happening is that we often want to be modern and relevant, but we often, in order for us to do that, we have to forsake tradition. Mm-hmm. And, God's, you know, they say God's, God's, tradition. You know, God's tradition, but yeah. And so, and it's God's tradition really, which falls on the wayside, because yeah. if we look at cultures, a lot of everything was established from the very beginning on mm-hmm. God's word, yeah. uh, the laws that we have established mm-hmm. by God's word, but we end up, the world ends up polluting it and tainting it and, and then twisting it. And then it, uh, then it just begins to lose its relevance and insignificance. But mm-hmm. Um, and, and for the pursuit of modernity and for the pursuit of what's the next thing or how I should be or what, what are other girls doing? You know, sometimes you just need to get into the word and mm, say, what does good. God want me to be doing? Yeah. And, you know, I know we say it from our perspective, but really you should really seek the perspective from the Lord. We're just trying to express it in a way that's more tangible and to kind of 
draw you into the words so that you can be led to, okay, okay, what, what does the word really say about this? Mm-hmm. Um, because, you know, it's one thing when we say it, but it's another thing when you read it and you're like, oh, wow, Lord, like that is something that's really important. And so for the women that are seeking the Lord and that really want, that are, they're hoping to find a Christian man one day, yeah. you know, oftentimes everybody's busy trying to find their relationship, yeah. but let God lead your steps. Let mm, your, it says like you're a tree planted, you're planted by the river bank. The, the tree doesn't move, mm. but the water does. And what mm. comes along the water will come mm. your way. So, you know, let God, <laughs> let God bring the person to you in due mm. season. And in the midst of a singleness, it's a, a season of singleness or a lifetime of singleness, mm. you know, yeah enjoy that because mm-hmm. i think ryan was saying we were talking about this that you know there's blessings for being just single there's yeah. blessings it's you you're just what is what was the scripture like first corinthians um mm-hmm. you're concerned oh no it's a woman you're concerned about things of the Lord. Corinthians seven yeah. i was like where it basically where the the quick summary was that um there were there are certain attributes like as a married man you have your yeah. uh, accountability as a married man mm-hmm. when you're single mm-hmm. you have your accountability and to god and you have your um so yeah. you um, know uh. in, in in all that everything is everything comes in due season and like mariah saying when she got married her life kind of changed and then you know when people begin to explore the idea of having children are there women who are about to give birth mm-hmm. or they have their children it's a new season, it's a new phase and they begin to change and it's, yeah. and it's a wonderful process. And, mm-hmm. you know, but when it's done in keeping with God's word and mm-hmm. what God's will is, it becomes like a beautiful thing. Not everything's perfect. No. So don't God's grace is sufficient. And, mm-hmm. you know, you'll continue to grow and say, okay, Lord, like, I don't know if I'm being the type of woman I'm supposed to be, but Holy Spirit examine my heart, show me where I'm lacking so that when the right person comes along, I can prepare myself and, you know, be uh, ready for that Mm -hmm. moment, you know? Yeah. Amen. That's good. Thank you, Christian. Carissa, do you have any closing thoughts? Um, Yeah. I just wanted to encourage the women that are watching this. um, Like it, all of this is not possible without like the empowerment of the Holy spirit. Mm -hmm. Cause I think about my life, like, four years ago, five years ago, like even walking with the Lord that I didn't have the conviction of apparel or my speech or how I interact with, you know, guys and things like that. Like that conviction came as there was a transformation as the Lord, as I was abiding in the word, as the Lord was like, Hey, like we need to, we need to correct that. Or like, that's an issue. We need to deal with that. And so I just want to encourage, like, it's, it might not be just like overnight of like, okay, I'm this, 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 like, Cause then that's like in your own flesh and your own strength. And it's like to continue in that of just the, the modesty of the heart, modesty of apparel, modesty of speech, like in, in everything, yeah, it's like, it does take the empowerment of the Holy spirit and just abiding in Christ. Because I look back and I'm like, I didn't have that conviction. Then I, my speech was a lot different then I interacted. It. So it's like, it, it took time, you know, but I think the, what you can do is make that decision of, I do want to seek the Lord. I do want the Lord to change my heart. Like I have been feeling convicted about this and just allowing the Lord to do that work. But also like you can't do it apart from, from the Lord, you know, apart from his Holy spirit. Mm -hmm. And so just to know that, um, like seek the Lord above everything. And then also just know like you can't do this on your own. Even all of us, like Mm -hmm. that we're sharing this with you. It's not that we've attained. It's not that we're perfected in it. It's that Mm -hmm. we strive daily to be Christ-like and we're going to fail and we do fail and we love each other to call each other out Mm -hmm. if we do, you know, like no one's perfect, but we are doing our best to abide in Christ and to be Christ-like and to keep those accounts short with the Lord where it's like the Lord shows us something that we would be repentant that we would be quick to be like okay lord like change this in me if it's not glorifying you if it's not honoring you then you know change it and Mm -hmm. i think also in that is like dying to self like even me as a Mm -hmm. single woman of the dying to self of how do i prefer my brother you know like is this what i say is it going to stumble what i wear is that going to stumble even if i think it might be okay it's like I'm not going to talk about these things. I'm not going to share these certain things. And so I think that's also like mm. p- part of like the modesty and also of like a guarding of the heart too, of just like, it might be totally fine, but go the extra mile of preferring the other. And that's what we're called to do as the Christ followers is to die to self. You know, it's a mm. daily thing 
to pick up your cross and to die to yourself. You're crucifying your flesh. Yeah. You're crucifying what you think is like, okay, it's normal. The world's doing it, but we are called to, to be otherworldly. Yeah, you know, exactly. So. Yep. Stand. Yeah. Cause part of, part of the modesty and what you were saying, not letting all the goods out for, <clears throat> for all to see is mm-hmm. also, I would say having boundaries in your, what you said reminded me of having boundaries in who you talk to. Yeah, yeah. flirting. Mm-hmm. And, yep. uh, yeah. Flirtatiousness. Oversharing. Because you can mm-hmm. dress modestly or... Words, be seductive. Or whatever, mm-hmm. but yeah, but be seductive with in words and mm-hmm. in actions. Yep. Um, mm. And just saying, oh, I'm just friends, mm-hmm. you know, with these people. But really, you can't have guys no. and girls friends, you no. know. Mm-hmm. Can't can't have close close friends, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Either either one side ends up liking, liking the other, other. and so okay. just having good boundaries in your life, mm-hmm. I think that's good and for the yeah. So mm, amen. Yeah, we could do yeah. so many podcasts and all these things <laughs> we were talking about, but we are over yeah, time. Four. But thank you guys so much for joining us, and um, we also wanted to just say that. Um, some other podcasts that I'd recommend that talk about this and things like for family is Ask for Me in My House. That's with Jordan and Melina Sisiati. And she has a good like thing on modesty because she was before dressing immodest um, and not realizing it and how the Lord has changed her. And she's like a mom of three and she's only 26 or 27. So it's just really cool. And we're going to try to get them on the podcast. We have so many other guests coming up. L.A. Marzuli and all that. So get excited. We love you guys so much. So thankful for you. And um, if you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. Uh, if you'd like to listen to us wherever your podcast, just type in Calvary Conversations. And also you can follow us on Instagram for our behind the scenes um, at Calvary Conversations. And if you guys would like to uh, let us know who you would like to have on the podcast, you guys can go to our website, calvaryconversations.com, and it's under request, I think. I don't know. But go to our website, calvaryconversations.com. Or DM us. Or DM us. Mm -hmm. Uh, We'll also be selling merchandise. So get ready for that, some t-shirts and stuff. Mm -hmm. And we're just very grateful for all the support that you guys have given Calvary Conversations. Make sure to share this video with a friend. But also what you can do is leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And another thing is this is a listener supported podcast. If you would like to donate, whatever amount you feel led by the Lord, you guys can do that in the description below that says donate. Thank you guys so much and God bless. Say bye guys. Bye. Bye Bye. Bye guys. (laughs) Bye guys. (laughs)